Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar as part of our 2021 analytical extravaganza. I am Eberhard Kuhn and I am the marketing manager for food and consumer products at Shimatsu Scientific Instruments. I'll be your moderator today and we will hear from Dr. Prabhat Satyal and our topic is authentication of essential oils through chiral GCMS. Before we start, I want to share a couple of notes with our viewers. Um, the webinar console has a variety of items to help enhance your experience and interaction with us. In the screen, you'll see the following items. The slides will appear on the left-hand side. Directly under the slides, you will see a resource list with uh, clickable links relevant to the material being presented today. On the top middle is the widget for questions and answers. Please submit your questions during the presentation through this widget, and we will answer them through the Q&A session. Just below the Q&A box are the moderator and speaker bios. You may expand the items here to learn more about us. On the right are survey questions that you may fill out any time during or after the presentation. Finally, at the bottom pane are the icons to bring up all these widgets in case they are minimized or frozen. Also, to get the full experience of this webinar, please enable the scratch and sniff function on your screen. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Again, if you're just joining us, I'm Eberhard Kuhn, your moderator. Today, we'll be hearing from Dr. Prabhat Sadyal, and our topic is authentication of essential oils through chiral GC. Uh, Dr. Prabhat Sadyal is the Chief Scientific Officer of Aromatic Plant Research Center. He is originally from Nepal and moved to the United States to pursue research in essential oils at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Where he, where he received his MS, PhD, and postdoctoral studies in essential oil research. Dr. Sadyal has studied the chemical composition of more than 30,000 essential oils from various parts of the world, has published more than 100 research articles in peer-reviewed journals, and has been a quality analyst serving in several positions for nearly 10 years. He is an editorial member of several journals. Dr. Sadyal has a special interest in essential oil adulteration detection using market-based analysis and has created the only known mass spectral library of synthetic markers. He has played a significant role in establishing several essential oil databases and has spoken at dozens of reputable international conferences. He also has research collaboration on several world-renowned universities for essential oil research and currently supervising PhD, Master of Philosophy, and Master's level students on their research. He's currently developing the first ever fully automated adulteration analysis software for GCMS that will identify the percentage of purity, origin, and mixed sources in essential oils. Now, I will hand it over to Dr. Satyal. Thanks, Everhart, for the kind information. Today, I'm going to present application of chiral GCMS for authentication of essential oil. I will be mostly talking on single quadrupole mass spectrometer. However, there are several advanced chromatographic techniques in use, which I'm not going to discuss today. And most of the time, I'm talking about essential oil, and, and I could say oil instead of essential oil. I would like to elaborate something about essential oils. In the picture, you are seeing secretory gland of clarices and peppermint plant. By the rupture of those glands, essential oils are produced. Essential oils are steam distilled or hydro distilled volatile parts of plants. And in case of citrus, it is a cold press 
oil of the citrus peel adulteration can be defined as as a process by which quality or nature of a given oil is reduced through addition of a foreign or inferior substances as for example orange oil yuzu oil and grapefruit oils are kind of 99% similar with each other but they have a huge price difference it could be around 20 to 100 times and they are easy to mix them as well perpetrator or adulterator have been taking advantage of price differences and chemical similarity to mix cheaper oil in the expensive oil and make a lot of profit essential oils are one of the expensive commodity and their price range can be from five dollar to fifty thousand dollar per kg the price of oil must depends upon availability of raw materials and yield percentages 0 0.1 to 0.3% is the most typical yield of essential oils there are about 17500 aromatic plants from a study out of them 300 plants are used in commercial essential oil production among them 50% are wild harvested and 50 percent are cultivated plants generally oils are made up of several compounds such as monoterpene sesquiterpene phenylpropanoid aliphatic aromatic compounds those compounds are mostly produced by uh, three different biosynthetic pathways they are methylonic acid non mevalonic acid and sikimic acid pathway essential oil is always challenged by four different essential oil community is all the time challenged by four different and most common kind of adulteration synthetic is man-made they can be either derived from natural precursor or petrochemical based precursor by using various reagents naturally isolated compound is converted into another aroma chemicals which is used as fillers in essential oils this is one of the analytically challenging types of adulteration and it is considered as one of the sophisticated adulteration detection technique like for example naturally obtained limonene from orange oil can get converted into other aroma chemicals such as terpene in oil, carbon etc etc career oils cooking oil additions type of adulteration is one of the less sophisticated type of adulteration adding non-volatile impurity which can barely appear in the CNS testing some people do also add water kerosene coconut oils etc etc essential oil component is isolated or fractionated from the cheap essential oil like eugenol walnut seniol lemon or other oil will be added to adulterate like limonene from the lemon will also be added to adulterate oils it's quite most challenging type of adulterations because they are natural and they can pass most of the test c14 test and they are yeah some of them matches with their chirality most sophisticated type of adulteration is addition of similar oils such as Lavender into lavender, cornmeal into peppermint, etc. 
since they have similar chemical profile because they are economically profitable and chemically similar to Oil contains several types of molecules, and isomerism does exist between same molecular formula. Isomers which have different connectivity, they are considered constitutional isomer. So there's 2-methylheptan, 3-methylheptan, and octanes. They have same molecular formula. Likewise, isomers are non superimposable mirror image. They are called enantiomer or chiral, or chiral isomer, otherwise diastereomers. Today we are focused on enantiomer or chiral molecules since they are extremely useful in authentication purpose. Let's talk about chiral molecule or enantiomers. In organic chemistry, those molecules which have one or more asymmetric carbon atoms are called chiral molecules. If any carbon atom is connected with four different groups, it generates asymmetric or chiral center. Enantiomers are non superimposable mirror image as soon as the shoes and the two hands, the two, they look alike but not superimposable. There are several chiral molecules present in oils. In presence of plane polarized light, if any molecule rotates light in clockwise direction, they are called dextro or plus isomer and they are normally indicated as D. Vice versa, if they rotate light in anti-clockwise direction, they are called Libio or minus isomer. And you can see the example of alpha pinene existing in two chiral form. Plant produces oil components through enzymatic process, which is specific. That's why for a certain plant species from all over the world, chirality will be the same and certain and expected. For chemically synthesized chiral molecules, mostly they produce racemic mixture, means equal quantity of D and L. So addition of one to one ratio of D to L will definitely bring unexpected chiral ratios in oil. When you take D glucose, it helps in making energy. But if you consume L glucose, it is indigestible, even though both look same molecule. Enzyme only works on certain enantiomer, not on all. Aroma is completely unique from one isomer to another, which eventually impacts on the final aroma of complete oil. Normally, enantiomer are represented by D or plus and L or minus. I mentioned some chiral molecules on the left side and the and other right side you can see the corresponding aroma. Like for example, D carbon is cuminic order. It smells like cumin. L carbon smells like spearmint. Similarly, D limonene smells like orangey and L limonene smells like turpentine. Also, D-linalool, 
which is one of the component of coriander. It smells like coriander, and really smells like a lavender. So there is a huge aroma difference between B A and L pair. And you can see other aroma chemicals also like alpha pinein, beta pinein, citronellol, transnerolol. They smell completely different from their counterparts. Not only aroma, chirality matters a lot in therapeutic benefits. As for example, you can see in medicine, D ibuprofen works as anti inflammatory medicine, whereas L isomer does nothing. Thalidomide was used as a drug for morning sickness back in 1960. It used to have both isomer D and L. It caused severe birth defects. It was because the drug had both D and L isomer. D was really acting for morning sickness for intended purpose, whereas L was causing birth defects. Similarly, D ethambutol is good for tuberculosis treatment, whereas L isomer can cause blindness. Some molecule only they are non superimposable, causing a huge difference in biological properties. Since their working mechanism is different from each other, because enzyme, you know, the binding properties with some certain specific site is only done by some certain enantiomer. That's why some works in something and some works in other. Or could it could be completely toxic or it could be completely beneficial. That's why chirality matters a lot in in therapeutic purpose. Oils are part of aromatherapy. By smelling people get their therapeutic benefits. There were several studies we were done in the past. I have included some here. It shows one enantiomer works differently than another. As for example, yellow limonene increases systolic blood pressure and changed alertness and restlessness in subject, whereas yellow isomer only affected in the blood pressure. When linalool was smelled after exposure to noise, d linalool increased beta waves of brain, whereas here linalool decreases the beta waves. Those all studies were done by done previously. Now question comes: How do we measure? priority in oil. First of all, we procure pure known standard of chiral terpene if available in market and run in nonpolar column and look for potential contaminants. If it is pure, we run polarimeter and obtain the number in plus or minus depending upon the types of enantiomer present. And we run the compound in chiral GCMS, like in the normal GCMS, and we normally use 30 microliter sample while running chiral GCMS. And we run if TCMS, you know, it, it, if it is completely pure, it may give only one peak. If it gives two peaks, then the taller peak is is the peak which has given plus or minus. And we also run minus pair, you know, 
if you are getting D, you will find minus and run it, and, and you'll see if your ZCMS will be able to separate both D and L isomer or not. In this way, we detect retention time, and then we use that retention time for other real unknown samples. And here are the methods that we use in chiral ZCMS analysis. Expression of chirality is very important. Based upon literature to literature, chirality majorly expressed in three different ways. A ratio of enantiomer, DTL, percentage as considering total specific molecule as 100%. You know, only counting those two pair, D and L, D plus L equals 200%. As for example, sometimes it is also expressed as 60% D and 40% L isomer, or 90% D and 10% L isomer. It should be total of 100%. And in enantiomeric excess, it reflects degree to which the sample contains one enantiomer is greater amount than other. A racemic mixture has an enantiomeric excess of 0% because the racemic mixture contains both isomers in equal quantities. So each other cancels and it becomes 0%. While a single completely pure enantiomer has an enantiomeric excess of 100% because one is only 100, right? 100 minus 0, 100. A sample with 70% of one enantiomer and 30% of other enantiomer has enantiomeric excess of 40%. Higher columns are of various types, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, cyclodextrin, and so many others. In a chiral column, molecules are separated solely based upon geometrical shape, not only based upon functional group. However, only those reagents that can enter the molecular cavity can be considered. Thus, the striking parallels with the lock and key relationship of biochemical process are revealed here. They are fundamentally separated on the base of shape. On this slide, you can see how linalool isomers distribute among different essential oils. You know, first D isomer came up and then L isomer came up. And you can see the picture of D and L isomer. They are only differs in one carbon atom. The percentages distribution remains same from all over the world. Like chiral percentages distributions remain same from all over the world. As for example, in clearly says D linalool will be around 23 and D linalool will be around 76%. However, however you have harvested uh, clearances oil. Definitely, if you try to do something else, some other experiment, and try to destroy molecules, the chiral ratio could change. Like, for example, <coughs> I will present that also. Uh, in coriander, d linalool is 83.9%, and the yellow linalool is 16.1%. Mother Nature or DNA at the plant is all the time controlling consistency in chiralities, no matter who is it grown. Sometimes process may change a little bit because, uh, like for example, in the lavender or places, there are linalool and linalal acetate. And linalal acetate can be hydrolyzed if you are doing hydrodistillation instead of steam distillation. So linalool's percentage will be 
highly impacted from the degraded linalool acetate because linalool acetate is exclusively in the EL form, and when the EL form completely degrades, it will change uh, linalool clarity. And it also tells sometimes it also tells the process how the oil is made. Right, so definitely in the plant it will be the same or similar. But if process alters, that will be the different story. But if you are expecting steam distilled oil and you are looking for their certain clarity, it will be the same. Right, or if it, if it differs, that means it could be hydro distill or it could be, you know, it could be synthetic addition or it could be addition from some other plant material which you can see. Limonene is one of the common molecule in essential oil and they can be added from cheaper oil to expensive oil. So you know uh, when I run when I run limonene in my chiral VCMS first D limonene comes and then L limonene comes. You can see in the chromatograph also. And from plant to plant, their enantiomeric ratio varies. Like orange is the cheapest oil out of all, and then orange limonene is added on other oil. Like for uh, example, if it is in balsam pearl, Balsam pearl has 0% D limonene over 100% L limonene. If they are mixed, the ratio will change and it will tell, okay, if the oil is pure or not. Tea tree essential oil is another popular oil produced in Australia. Tea tree oil contains approximately 42% terpene in for oil molecule. And those, and terpene in for oil is a chiral molecule and they are distributed in 67% D to 33% EL isomer. There could be some standard deviation all the time. And you can see on this paper, uh, from lab to lab, you could see variation from 66% to 69 percentages. You know, it depends upon the way of integration and the sample load. Several things can change priority, you know, to some certain you know extent to create standard deviation. Mostly turbine in for all is obtained through turpentine industry, but unfortunately, addition of turbine for all changes in optical activities of T3 oil. So normally people add tiny quantities of limonene to adjust optical activities, even though limonene are present in less than a half percent, and they are strongly like limonene, philandrine, they are strongly chiral, chiral molecule. Even they are present in tiny quantities, they can influence a lot in optical activities. To balance optical activities of tea tree oil, people add limonene. And, and they are in tiny quantities, and people do not care what is tiny and tiny molecule. So, but if you are seeing, you know, limonene, 59D to 41L in T3, it is authentic T3. Otherwise, it has been played in limonene also. So limonene is small, chiral biomarker molecules in T3 oil. And here is an example which shows how the process changes uh, in enzymatic ratio, and if adulteration happens from linalool or linalool acetate, 
how could it impact on overall priority distribution. Like this sample was run by S. Doyle and and one sample was run twice. And you can see lavender blue from China. Uh, you can see R linal measure on the VCMS. Next linal measure ratio of R to S. And they are expressed in two different units and uh, percentages unit and then ratio of R to S. You can see within China the ratio of R to S is kind of consistent. But if you see the French type and Bulgarian types, a ratio of R to S a little bit varies. And and if you look over X wood leaf, the R T S R T S is like E L two D. And linal elicitate you can see in the uh, Lavendula intermedia, this is different species, so it has 8.17 and 11.40. So there is variation, even though they are, you know, they are pure oil, and and here I think it is because of the process of distillation. Like I already told, linalol acetate also gets hydrolyzed into linalool. But if you look over linalool from XOO leaf, it has 0.99% D isomer or yes isomer. And lower the D isomer, it will be the lesser the lesser the quality of essential oil, you know, and all oil examines fit to the BP specification for enhanced molecularity with lesser than equals to 12 D isomer for linalool and lesser than or equals to 1 for D linalal acetate. Only linalal acetate, hex oil was outside the specified range for linal elicited from lavender oil. So if somebody eats this linal elicited and creates, it will increase the D linal elicited. Like in the X wood, you are seeing D linal elicited is way higher than in the pure lavender oil. And if linalool is added on lavender oil uh, from the external source, it will lower the D percentages. Of course, there there is some play of you know the process which oil is produced. In this way, we can utilize chirality for adulteration detection, but make sure the oil is produced by the same method. You know, when you try to compare, you know, sometimes method matters for some molecules, not on all. Here is another example of coriander from various authentic sources with an unknown commercial lot. 180907F. And if you compare here, what do you see? Alpha pinene, 92, 91, 93, 95, 25. It is way lower D alpha pinene than the authentic source. Likewise, campin is same. Sabinin is also same. Beta pinene, you'll see reverse. And limonene, you'll see yellow limonene is higher. And for linalool, they added, yeah, you can see 13 to 87. And I also saw a synthetic marker on this linalool called dihydrolinalool. 
if it is produced through chemical in you know, a fossil fuel based precursor it is supposed to be 50 50 but it is showing 13 to 87 they also added yell deal yell in alum from some other source in you know besides Synthetically allowed here, so it is extremely useful on identifying adulteration. Camphor, you can see it is also a reverse type. Terpene in for all is also a different one. So basically, this sample has a huge, you know, uh, enantiomeric variation from authentic sample. And, and if, if you go and look over my paper, these oils chemical compositions seems like authentic oil chemical composition. And chirality is very important in such cases. Here is another example of rosemary essential oil, which I collected from various parts of the world. They almost exhibited similar chirality in spite of huge geographical vari variation, somewhere from Alabama, somewhere from South Africa, somewhere from Kenya, Australia, Nepal. And it is one of the ideal example how the chirality remains consistent throughout the geographical variation. And of course, like other analytical techniques, this technique is not perfect for minor co-eliting constituent since it shows larger standard deviation and sometimes undetectable. And none of the chiral column is perfect for all types of chiral oil molecules. So you need to use multiple types of chiral columns. Pure enantiomeric compounds are not easily available in market for standard. So either sometimes you have to isolate on your own, which is quite not easy. Essential oil contains both chiral, non-chiral components. And chiral GCMS is only useful for chiral molecules, not the non-chiral. So non-chiral adulteration will be undetected by this type of technique. Sometimes exact same nature identical isomer if used, it will be indistinguishable. Nowadays, biosynthetic and enhanced selected chemical synthesis are also popular, which produces desired enantiomer. Like, for example, you get D isomer, like uh, if you are synthesizing carbon from D limonene, you'll get the yellow carbon all the time. And if you use yellow limonene, you'll get a D carbon. So they are pretty stereoselective synthesis, and you can manipulate the chiral ratios, which is which is supposed to be the consistent. But uh, if you look over all other parameters, you know chirality, synthetic marker. And if you do chemometric analysis, you'll definitely figure out if adulteration is there or not. Thanks a lot. Let's thank Dr. Satya for such an exciting presentation. Again, under the resource list, you can find more information about our analytical solutions. If you have not had a chance, please fill out the survey questions on the right-hand side to provide feedback and request additional information. At this time, we will begin our Q&A session. Thank you to the audience for attending and sending questions. We have time for a few questions.
Hello. At this point, we have time for a few questions uh, for, for Dr. Pro Albert. So the first question is, how does the chirality or the enantiomeric distribution depend upon the production method like hydrosteam or CO2 extract? Thanks, Igor. This is very uh, kind of, you know, most important part when you do chiral, you know, ZCNS analysis. And like I showed in the lavender, you know, uh, chirality distribution, there were some differences. They were distilled on different, different places, you know, and somewhere like a uh, uh, steam plus hydro and somewhere hydro only, somewhere steam only. And essential oil has some compounds that are thermally labile, like ester, you know, and when you boil, you know, when you distill essential oil because of presence of water, ester sometimes convert into alcohol, you know, like linalyl acid it gets converted to linalool. And if uh, linalool gets converted to, uh, I mean, linalyl acid, you know, lin in lavender, linalyl acid is like yell like 99%, but linalool is, is like 95%. And you are, you know, you are hydrolyzing 99% and you are adding yell linalool, you know, on that 95% linalool. So you will drop the yell linalool percentages. Sorry, you will increase the yell linalool percentages, you know. It would not impact heavily, but based upon method, you know, it may change slightly now. But it, it is still useful. And like there are other okay. oils, like marjoram oil has sabinin hydrate, these sabinin hydrate trans, and that sabinin hydrate gets hydrolyzed into sabinin molecule. So, uh, at the time, you know, the, you know, uh, chirality of sabinin will change. And there are several examples, but you should be careful, you know, what molecule you are looking on or what method has been used. That also makes sense. But, you know, try to compare apple to apple, like hydro distill to hydro distill or steam distill to steam distill or, or wet distill or dry distill. Yeah, that, that way, I think you can avoid the limitation of chiral ZC. Okay, well, thank you very much. So that sounds like the, the extraction method is, in fact, uh, important. Uh, there's a, yep. a kind of a follow-up question to that, and it's uh, can the chirality of a natural compound change during the processing of the oil? Yeah, it's the same question, I think. I, I answered yes. it. It may change slightly, but you should not be worried a lot. So, yeah. It's, it's normally, when you see the literature, there is ranges, you know, given. Uh, but it will fall under okay. the range, you know, if mm, it goes out, same, completely out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, next question is, which bioenzyme is used for L-carbon from D-limonene? Enzyme? I don't know about the enzyme. You know, I had done uh, acidic hydrolysis to convert limonene to carbon and carbon to limonene. Oh, sorry. Limonene to carbon, you know, if you use D, you'll get L. If you use D limonene, you'll get L carbon. It's like a mm -hmm. selective synthesis. And if you use L limonene, you'll get D carbon. D limonene, L carbon. I did that, you know, and it was exclusively, you know, only one isomer. Okay. I, I, I don't know about enzyme in enzyme science. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And to, to all of you, if you have any questions, uh, questions that we aren't able to answer right here in the live Q&A sessions, please contact us and we will get you the answer via email. Uh, the next question is, uh, I guess uh, somebody was asking, can you repeat what columns you used for the chiral separation? That was a Restec uh, cyclodextrin something? Yeah, cyclodextrin, beta cyclodextrin. Uh, I used Restec, you know, normally I use Restec column, but Sopilgo also provides, you know, uh, mm. yeah. okay. And there are, you know, alpha, beta, gamma, you know, the most popular one. And and some of the molecule is inseparable, even in the beta. Beta is the most popular on essential oil chiral analysis. But for some ketone or something, you know, you have to use different column. And one column, you know, I already told on the presentation, one column is not enough for some, comp I mean, for all compounds. But most of the compound appears on beta cyclodextrin. Okay, thank you. And uh, just a reminder to all of uh, all of the listeners as well, 
uh, tomorrow uh, you will get a uh, an email from Shimatsu that has a link to the recording. So you can go back and listen to the entire recording and, you know, look up. Then there you can pause on the slide that actually has the column information. So that's the opportunity uh, for you to get some, some more detailed information there as well. There is a, a question that's sort of related, and this: have you tried any Carvel LC columns? No, I have not tried Carvel LC. Because when I work in essential oil, they are most of the volatile, you know, so I don't need to use. Right, yeah, I think LC is less frequently used for uh, uh, for essential oils. Like uh, non, non volatile, that, I think. Here, Right. Yeah. There are some non-volatile ones, and I have seen some application. Here's an interesting question. Maybe somebody is trying to make some money on the side. <laughs> They're asking, what is the name of the essential oil that costs $50,000 per oh, okay. gram? <laughs> it's a very good question. You know, uh, it is called Agar Wood, Ecularia sinensis, I think, botanical name. And, mm -hmm. and it is made from wood. You know, wood is infected. And it smells great, you know, and it's mostly sold in, uh, it, it mostly sells in uh, what is called Saudi Arabia, Arabic countries. Hmm. Yeah, and what, what makes wood, it so expensive? called wood also. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, what makes it so expensive, though? Because uh, it yields low and, and making the fungal, you know, you have to do fungal infection on the tree to make this oil, you know. You mm, infect okay. with fungus. And then you collect the wood. You have to kill the. You have to cut the tree, right? So, so you are cutting oh, trees. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Next question: Is L-menthol being made biosynthetically or enzymatic? I heard both way nowadays. Before people oh, people used to only synthesize racemic menthol, and now they have developed some way to synthesize. I mean, separate D from L, because peppermint contains uh, L menthol, and peppermint is one of the most popular oil. You know, so if you add L menthol, you could make more money. I think <laughs> so. They need L isomer, <laughs> pure L isomer. Okay, thank you. Um, next question. Does the state of the plant material affect the GCMS test results, like fresh herbs versus dried versus uh, freeze-dried? Uh, so far, I don't think uh, that, you know, I think distillation method could change. This is my, you know, I have not done thorough experiment on that, but based upon my chemical knowledge, I think there could not be, you know, there is less chance to, you know, have degradation. You could you could evaporate you know you could lose volatile compound, but you cannot change mm -hmm. you know and you cannot change linalyl acetate to linalyl on 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 keeping on the dry condition you know from fresh flower to you know dried flower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only by you know storage condition it won't change. I I I would I would think so. Yeah, the storage con conditions are important. Even if it's dried or freeze dried, it has to be sealed so you don't lose. Since they are volatile compounds, yeah, you may lose will... volatile compound, <laughs> but the ratio will, yeah. you know, I I believe you know uh, will remain the same. Chiral ratio. You you could have you know if you are getting one percent yield of essential oil, it may drop to zero point one because you lost mm -hmm. a lot of volatile organic compound. But the ratio you are expecting will be the same, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question is: How intense is the QC control evaluation for assuring you are producing the desired enantiomer during the extraction? Uh, can you say the question again? Uh, how intense is the QC yeah. control evaluation? to assure that you are producing the desired enantiomer during the extraction? Uh, like uh, how QC will be sure about enantiomeric variation? I think the question is, you know, what kind of uh, QC control are you doing? Uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> normally, I have, you know, uh, standard ranges for all different origin. So I compare, you know, 
whenever I get oil, I compare with that standard and confirm you know, if it is meeting you know standard tire litter issues or not. You know, there could be a little bit variation, mm -hmm. but but not huge enough. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Here's an interesting one, and I've seen that with a lot of other products. Similar question is um. Do you see a variation of inensio uh, meric ratios in oils of different uh, origins or different regions? To not be seen the variation, you know, I you know I presented one paper on the rosemary, you know, on this slide. You can see there could be a little bit variation, and uh, if the plant is the same, you know. Or the species is the same, you know. Sometimes plant get uh, what is called uh, they get they evolved by the time you know they do the crossing, you know, and then they develop different varieties. So if mm -hmm. that that has not happened, it should be the same, I think, because plant DNA be this, is yeah. changing day by day. <laughs> so you should be careful, <laughs> I think. Yeah, because I've seen some studies on on other foods where they actually use uh, they do metabolomic studies on to do for the country of origin, but it may not affect the enantiomeric ratio. Okay, next question, and I think you've answered that already earlier. It's uh, due to the thermal sensitivity of some essential oils. Do you sometimes use HPLC or GPC or LCMS? This is a very, very good question, I think. Yeah. Mm, due to thermal sensitivity, I don't use. Of some of the, I don't yeah. use, you know. I, I don't use because, you know, uh, I use only GCMS. But for mm -hmm. some molecule, very thermally labile molecule, you know, we don't care. You know, we only care, I mean, those molecules which can appear in the GC, you know, for authentication purpose. Like, like in the cannabis CBDA, you know, CBDA is thermally, you know, very sensitive. So you don't see that in the GCMS. You have to run SPLC mm -hmm. only for that case, you know. But, I, you know, I don't have that type of compounds in essential oil that are thermally, you know, thermally unstable. Yeah, and I think that's why we, yeah. what we had yeah. said, yeah, with uh, you know, the LC, that's... So there are different ones, but I guess the ones you're looking at are all thermally stable, so they're DC. Um, here's a speaking of degradation. Here's a, a question. So, is it possible for some isomers to degrade more than others due to age, temperature, oxidation, etc.? Yeah, it could be, but I don't know. You know, there might be chance. You know, some are, you know, feasible to react, like you know. If a reaction happens, you know, some 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 are labeled for reaction, some are not. Mm -hmm. they, they, there, there should be some, you know, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have not done research on that. Right, yeah, and that's, again, that's a whole different yeah. uh, different project. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have one more question here. So which is the preferred method for sampling and the advantages and disadvantages between headspace Direct injection and SPME. I like SPME. Over you do like SPME, yeah. yeah. Do you use the regular or the or the arrow? We use regular. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and uh, another question, and this is something because it, it's one of my favorite detectors. Actually, it's. Somebody said, yeah, I would be curious if they could use a sniffer port to distinguish oh, okay. the chiral compounds. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could separate them if you use even uh, multi dimensional DC with chiral, probably mm -hmm. you can completely separate. Even if you use chiral DC NS with olfactory port, you can separate DNA, right? But but the retention time difference is so short, you know. <laughs> you might miss yeah. it. But if you use <laughs> but if you use uh, multiple dimensional VC chiral, mm -hmm. you you will be able to you know smell both isomer and figure out what is causing the uh, smell on the you know oil or any food food you know. 
Yeah, but the, like you said, usually the, the separation of the, the enantiomers is not that much, so it could be just a second or two, so you'd have, a very, you have to have a very quick nose. <laughs> yeah. So, but the, the, the sniffer is always, I thought it was always an interesting detector, although after listening to your presentation, I would be a little concerned because you, you show such uh, strong differences in the, you know, the different enantiomers, you know, one being very yep. healthy and, and everything, and the other one being very toxic sometimes. Yep. And so you, you would only want to smell the good one and not the, yep. uh, not the bad one. Because your body wants, you know, when you, when you use uh, enantiomeric medicine or enantiomeric aromatherapy, I mean, enantiomer containing, you know, medicine or enantiomer containing essential oil, Mm -hmm. Your body wants some certain types of enantiomer for treatment or for you know disease control. And if you take different enantiomer, or well, you know component is the same. Your non-chiral VC is telling, okay, this is linalool, but you are taking D linalool mm -hmm. instead of L linalool or instead of D thalidomide instead of L thalidomide. <laughs> yeah, it will completely impact. You know, it it might give very bad results to your body. I think. And when people formulate, you know, normally in the formulation world, they see linalool only, and they add linalool five percent. You know, whatever was told in the recipe, especially on cosmetic industry or you know, or food industry, they they normally look linalool as linalool only. So they don't. You know, most mm -hmm. of the you know people forget to see linalool is D. <laughs> You know, linalool existed two from D and L, and some sesquiterpene, you know, existed more than one, you know, form, because when you have more than one chiral center, you can have more than two pair, you know. Mm -hmm. That that's right. Yeah, it gets yeah. it can get it it can get quite complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't see any more questions in the Q and A section. If by chance I miss somebody, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, Feel free to uh, to email the the questions to us. So at this point, we're also coming toward to the end of our allocated time for the for, for the webinar. So thank you all for joining and for all the interesting questions. That was quite uh, informative. And uh, since we're running out of time, we'll uh, we'll reach out to you individually if there are any more questions that would come up and that we couldn't answer today. Once again, thank you all for attending and participating. And uh, as I mentioned, we will send you an email with a link to view the recorded version of this presentation at your convenience so you can go back and look at the column information and those kind of things. Uh, we hope to have you back in uh, webinars we organize in the future. And for now, uh, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.